Welcome to our service today from the Ingleborough team of churches. Today coming to you from Chapel of Dale. And I'm here at one of the fords across the river that runs through the dale uh, near Beasley's, just by the waterfalls walk that passes down to Ingleton. And you can see the stepping stones behind me. Uh, I don't think today I'm going to go across because they're a bit wet on the top and I think I might get more than just wet feet if I tried. On well, today's service, we are reflecting on the story where Jesus calms the storm. Well, we have our issues with water in the Yorkshire Dales, sometimes quite a lot of it. Uh, the river here is not too high at the moment, but we get plenty of rainfall, but that's nothing compared to the storm that Jesus and his disciples faced, uh, a right squall on the Sea of Galilee. And we'll be reflecting more on that a little later in the service. Well, I'm recording this uh, between two storms that are hit in the UK, Storm Dudley on Wednesday and Storm Eunice at the weekend. I've just uh, got outside to catch the good weather while I can. Well, the climate of the world is in some ways changing and we're facing more of these extreme weather events. And it's worth reflecting on that, that in whatever happens in life, whether the storms be physical, whether they be more metaphorical, we have a Lord who is good to us and who will watch over us. Doesn't solve all our problems, but it's great to know there's someone there for each one of us. He also helps us to be there for each other. And he shows us the way to care for one another. And don't we need one another in these troubled times? As we begin the service, let's pray. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Let's now sing in worship.
Jesus calms the storm. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake and the boat was filled with water and they were in danger. They went to him, woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him? Well, it's quite apt that we have a story about storms in our service this week, given the storms that we're experiencing in the UK at the moment. And in our family, we've been uh, reading together at bedtime a story called The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. Some of you might know it. It's about a ship of that same name uh, sailing on an adventure. And of course, as part of the adventure, a storm comes up on the sea and the way that it's described in the book, uh, one of the main characters feels as if the ship has gone up a giant hill of water and is sitting on top of it and then starts rushing down into a vast valley of water below, only to be confronted by another hill. Uh, scary stuff uh, and very evocative in the book. And it brings back to mind a story that I experienced a little while ago. Uh, I've shared it before about a time when I was on holiday with uh, my family uh, many years ago now and it, we were on a beach in Cornwall and I went swimming out in the sea and I went perhaps a little further than I should have done and it felt like I just passed this point when the wave suddenly became very large indeed and it felt like I was at the top of a hill of water looking down a, va a large valley and uh, there was that knot of fear that just came, oh heck, I'm a bit out of my depth here. Well, the story, the calming of the storm, shows that if we're afraid and feel out of our depth, Jesus never is. But is this more than just a, a memorable story? Well, I believe that this story and others like it are a sign. They show us something about who Jesus is. Who is he? That's the question that the story finishes with, that's on the disciples' lips. Who is this? He commands even the waters and the winds and they obey him. Who is this? Well, he is at least a prophet. Some of the prophets of the Old Testament uh, do miracles where the weather seems to respond to their prayers or words. Jesus is at least a prophet. But as you read some of the miracles like this one, some of the stories in Luke chapter 8 and 9 around this one, you get a sense that no problem is beyond Jesus. Ultimately, any problem, challenge, trial that humanity can face is solved through him. Ultimately, that is the case. who is Jesus. But does that mean that everything is just going to be okay? Well, it doesn't quite work like that, does it? There's, we still get afraid of things in life, whether the trials we face are literal storms at sea or on the waters, or whether they are problems of another kind. It's natural, even realistic to be af afraid. The disciples would have been fools not to be afraid in a boat that was sinking. There's been a lot of fear in the world in the last two years. I think fear has been one of the, um, the overriding emotions in COVID during the pandemic, or if not fear, at least anxiety, because it's been so uncertain, so unsettling. It just cre has created that sense of gnawing anxiety in us. Then of course there's the climate crisis, what some are calling a crisis, at, at least uh, climate change 
dramatic change at that. That can create fear and anxiety. But I think this story of Jesus shows us that faith, it doesn't stop fear, but it at least tempers it. It changes it. Faith changes our fear. It lessens it because it's matched with trust. Well, I was saying that we should expect miracles, you know, expecting things like this just to be sorted out. We live in an age when miracles are not quite so believed as perhaps they were in times past. We could hardly say that the disciples were gullible, however. They thought it was the end. They thought they were going to drown. They weren't looking for miracles, but Jesus delivers one. They still were people who needed evidence to believe in miracles. They may have been more ready than in our scientific age, but still they wanted to see what was going to happen. They wanted evidence. They weren't just gullible. Well, does that mean we should expect miracles in the here and now? Well, I think that's a question for another sermon, another time. But I do believe that we should at least allow the possibility. We should expect God to be at work, whether that's through natural means to help us or through something more. We should have that faith that God cares about us and he cares enough to look after us. I believe this story shows us that the trials, whether they're literal storms or uh, a storm of a, a metaphorical kind, just a trial, a challenge in our lives, these trials are opportunities. They're opportunities for us to exercise faith in Jesus in God's care for us, in his goodness. That doesn't make it easy, I know. We can't just snap our fingers and choose to not be disturbed, you know, afraid, not to find things hard. We can't just change the way we feel overnight. But trials, challenges, they can be seen not just as problems, but as opportunities for us. So what do we do about this? Well, we do need to have a strengthened faith. Faith that can persevere through some of these things, expecting, yes, God to care for us, looking to Christ to care and to show the goodness of God to us, expecting God to be at work. Somehow we don't always know how, but expecting that ultimately will, things will be all right. We might not see it soon, We maybe will only see God's deliverance in eternal life. But faith trusts him on the journey. We're approaching the time of Lent in the church's year. And in one sense, that's an ideal time to renew our faith, to look again to Jesus, to renew our trust in God, in his care. So maybe that is through some of the ministries of the church, through our services, events, courses and so on, or just time spent by ourselves, learning more of Christ, renewing our understanding of him, of God's plans for us, of his purposes, praying that he'll see us through and making those positive choices to serve him and to look out for others. Let's pray to finish. Heavenly Father, we praise you that Jesus is the Lord, and that no problem is beyond his power to save us. Lord, renew our trust in him, that we may see you at work. Help us through the times of trial Lord, when we're afraid and anxious, calm our fears, renew our trust, bring us peace and help us to know the joy of serving you and following Christ. 
Give us the grace to look out for one another, to show our love and care to those around us, that we may all be strengthened in faith in our walk with you. We ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to dwell in us, to renew us in this season. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen.
Good morning, my name's Tessa. I'm from St John's Church in Low Bentham. I hope everybody survived Storm Eunice this week. As you know, several of us are following the Lay Worship Leaders course at the moment, and my task for the holiday has been to think about kinesthetic prayer. So first idea is to have some pebbles or stones, you need a piece of paper, bowl of water and a pen. And I'm going to start by putting my pebbles one by one into the water as I offer up my prayers to Jesus. I've been fortunate enough to visit Galilee and the last pebble has come from the shores of Galilee and I'm adding that as I pray for world peace. The next thing can be done by all the family so I hope you children are ready to help the grown-ups and we're going to make some prayer boats. So the first thing you need to do is fold your paper lengthways and make a firm crease down the edge. You then open the paper up, taking the corners furthest away from you, fold the paper towards you, edge to edge, and make another firm crease. You then take a top corner furthest away from you, fold it in, to line up with the crease at the centre of your paper. You do the same with the other side so that you now have two triangles. You lift the flap up, you fold the corner in just so that you've got a smaller triangle, the corners on the edge. You open the flap again make another small triangle just so that the edge is adjacent to the large triangle at the top turn your paper over and take your corners in to fold them so the edge is matching the other side you can then take your pen and write your prayer in between the small corners my first prayer this week is for Andrew Barrett and his family. Andrew has had a stroke this week and he's recovering in hospital. So I hope and pray that he's home soon and his family can be together and that he makes a speedy recovery. My second prayer is for the safe arrival of my granddaughter who is due any day now. Once you've written your prayers, with the open edge still facing you, you can fold your pairs inwards and upwards. You do that on both sides. And then you'll find that you've got a hat. You take that hat, twist it, press it down to end up with a diamond shape. Again with the open edge towards you, you fold the bottom corner upwards, not allowing it to touch the corner underneath, but to leave an edge all the way round of about an inch. You then turn it over and repeat on the other side, leaving that border of about an inch. You now have a smaller hat, which again, you twist, open and twist. And this is the part where the magic happens, children. Might have to help your parents with this. Take the corners on either side, lift and open, press them down, and now your boat is ready to float. And hopefully as you pass your bowl through the week, you can remember the prayers that you've made today. And I hope everybody has a happy week ahead.
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this service. Whatever storms we face, Jesus is with us. He is our mighty Lord and he protects us. In a couple of weeks, it will be the start of Lent. Our Ash Wednesday service on the 2nd of March is coming up. So do keep an eye on our social media channels on our website for details. We've got Lent courses as well for those who are, are local to us, if you'd like to join with those. I'm hoping to be able to live stream the Ash Wednesday service from St Mary's Church in Ingleton, uh, so do keep an eye for that. That'll be half past seven uh, here, uh, UK time, uh, on the 2nd of March. 
Let me close this service with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>